Um, hi, my name is Nikita, and today I will be talking about something interesting about updates. But first, let me state the obvious. ClickHouse already supports updates and deletes. However, uh, the current solution has some key caveats that users must be aware of in order, uh, uh, yeah, which also makes it impractical in certain use cases. In this talk, I will try to explain the difficulties we have had and will present a new solution which will, uh, which will make it even easier for you to use updates in your workloads. Okay, imagine you create a table in ClickHouse. Uh, here is a simple one from our sample data sets. It has five columns. Some of them ha have some complicated types of low cardinality of string. And, in order, and it is ordered by two columns, path and time. Let's see what will happen if we insert a data in this table. ClickHouse stores data in data parts. This is a special entity uh, representing a piece of a table. If you take a closer look, you will see that data is stored column by column, not row by row, which is obvious because ClickHouse is a columnar database. For each column, ClickHouse will store at least two files on the storage, the file with the compressed binary data and an index file. For some columns we have that have a special type, ClickHouse will store additional information in separate columns. As you see, this is the case for columns subproject and project that have type low cardinality string and there you have to store dictionaries uh, separately. And finally, ClickHouse also saves some system information in separate columns. Let's have a look at the invariants we have in our database internally. First of all, and this is the most important one, the data part is immutable, which means you cannot change it once it's created. We have a background operation called merge. In other databases, it's called compaction. And this operation merges several parts into a new, bigger one. All the right operation create a new data part. Imagine you decided to update the table and uh, change certain rows uh, in your table based on some column and some condition. How can you can do that? Here is the current way, and uh, to do that, you just issue a query, alter table update, specify the column to update and the condition to update. And let's take a look what will happen under the hood when you do this. The mutation will choose the affected part, the set of affected parts. And as was stated previously, we cannot change the part in place, so we have to create a new one. And uh, in our case, the column subproject has to be rewritten completely. Other columns within the data part must be copied as is or hard link. By the way, do you know what the hard link is? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, all these make the update via mutation very expensive in terms of resources. And the situation is way worse with deletes because delete touches all the columns within the table. So in this case, um, we would love to get rid of all the rows where the project column equals slow queries because we don't like slow queries. And internally, uh, that's what will happen. We'll have to rewrite all the columns within the affected data part. And uh, imagine the, all the deleted rows are within a certain range. And in order just to remove a range, you need to rewrite the whole file. And like the file may be huge. This is super expensive and also depends on the number of columns you have uh, in your table. In this case, we had only five. Uh, and yeah, the more you have, the, the more columns you have, the more you need to rewrite. So we understand that the current solution with mutations is slow and expensive because we need to rewrite a lot of data even when the number of updated rows is small. Moreover, there is a dependency between the merge operation and the update operation, which means if we would love to update a certain part and we detect that this part is being merged into a new, like, into a new one, we have to wait for this merge to finish. This makes the latency of the update query unpredictable. The right way to use them is to run them once in a while and carefully track the progress in a special system table. Uh, imagine you have a DBA department and in order to execute a mutation, you need to fill in an escalation for them. So obviously this is not ideal, but users want it simple. The, they want to issue frequent updates because they often come from OTP databases where this is considered normal, so we as engineers have to innovate. Firstly, we decided to make the deletes more lightweight because it's easier. You just need to get rid of uh, certain rows. How can it be done? Simply, we can mark the row as deleted logically but not deleted physically from the storage. We introduced a special system column 
named row exists, which contains an array of Boolean values indicating whether a row is present in a database or not. Rows are eventually removed from the storage uh, during subsequent merge operations. So now delete becomes an update, making it more lightweight, update of a single column, which is less expensive, uh, expensive, but still the mechanism inherits all the problems of the updates via mutation, which we talked about previously. When you think how to make updates more lightweight, you may come up with a naive idea. Let's not do anything at all. Let's just remember what we promised and apply our promise during the subsequent select. Cool, now updates uh, doesn't do anything uh, uh, meaningful, they return instantly, but we slow down selects. And we still need to materialize our promises in the background, which might be slow. Finally, I'm going to present our new solution which we came up with, which is going to solve all these problems. The idea is the following. Let's remember not just an expression that we need to apply, but an exact location of the affected rows along with the resulted values which we need to put instead. We call it a patch. A patch is represented as a special type of a part and stored alongside regular data parts in the storage, and they can participate in merges. They can be merged either with data parts applied to the data parts or merged within themselves. So let's see how it looks like internally. In order to be able to uniquely identify a row within a table, we introduced a set of system columns, block number, block offset, and part offset. These columns must be materialized in each source part, and in, on this slide, you can see them green. The most important things, thing is that these three columns allow you to identify a row within a table even if a part got merged in another part. So, now there is no dependency on the merge operation. Remember that previously we wanted to update a sub-project column. And let's say all the affected rows are located within a certain range. In order to update this range, we don't need to rewrite the whole column. We just create a new patch part, which you can see on the bottom right corner. And we store the exact location of these updated rows along with the resulting values. I would love to highlight the fact that we now calculate uh, expressions only once, because like this operation also might be slow when you deal with hashes, or like, like calculating Bloom filters. Uh, perfect, but the talk is cheap. Let's took as, uh, take a look at the benchmark. Let's compare the performance of the new update algorithm with patch parts and the new one with mutations, the old one with mutations. You see that uh, the new one is a thousand times faster and after executing both of these queries, the subsequent selects will see the updated values. By the way, as you might notice, we decided to give this another syntax in SQL, which is closer to ANSI SQL, because we now want people to use our updates without hesitation, and they are as fast as in OTP databases. Let's measure the broader impact of these updates on the select queries. How we can do that? We used a modified version of ClickBench, our own benchmark, before the benchmark run, we executed 12 update queries, which updated some, some, some columns of this, uh, of this table used in the benchmark, and measured the performance of the updates and subsequent selects separately for three algorithms. Heavy wave mutation, naive approach of lightweight update, and lightweight update with patch parts. Yeah, here is a comparison of update queries themselves. We excluded the naive approach from here because it doesn't do anything meaningful and obviously it will be the fastest one. But if we compare the updates with patch parts and updates via mutation that rewrite all the data, we see a clear difference. We can notice that identifying the affected rows and writing the patch part to the storage still takes some time. But it is way cheaper than rewriting certain columns completely. And uh, this is comparable to the latency of insert. As I said, what is nice about two, these two algorithms is that after, after the execution, the subsequent select will see the updated values. Uh, that's what we'll see on the next slide. The select performance. There are 40 plus select queries in the click bench, so like, we'll not compare them query by query, but like, have an aggregated view on them. We can see that the winner here is still old heavyweight mutations. And this is obvious because all the heavy lifting was done during the update, we've rewritten all the data, and now the selects 
use the data parts as is. But our new patch parts algorithm is only 20% slower, which is a good trade-off. And we see that the naive approach does all the computation during select queries, and that results in them being two and a half times slower. What do we have at the end? ClickHouse now supports frequent updates and delete, full stop. Uh, and you can use it as a part of your workload. And you can try it soon in our cloud in the, and in the open source. Thank you.